Welcome to High Infidelity. The best cheating videos on YouTube. If you enjoy this content, remember to subscribe and turn on notifications. Now let's get into the video. Me 27 female with my husband, 26 male of 4 years, I am lying to him about cheating. My spouse has a fetish, which I just discovered. When we first met, the was fantastic, the finest I'd ever had, and I told him so, believing he'd appreciate the sincere remark. I was the more experienced of the two of us, and we both knew it, so I reasoned that this positive reinforcement would be beneficial. It seemed to do so at the time, but in light of the latest disclosure, I am rethinking that. There were no significant issues in our relationship outside of the bedroom, and there wasn't much of a problem there. Our intensity faded after a time, but I was never dissatisfied, and I assumed he felt the same way. Recently, though, he's been strangely inattentive, and I could tell he wasn't really getting off, despite the fact that he always attended to my demands. He first claimed to be weary, but that explanation rapidly fell apart. We eventually set aside some time to have a lengthy chat about that subject, albeit he pretended that he was just doing it for my benefit. He attempted to play it all off, but I could tell he was concealing something. I probed him, and he admitted to having a fetish. At first, I didn't comprehend what he was saying and believed he was accusing me of adultery. I automatically assured him that I had never cheated, and he told me that he knew, but had simply gotten carried away with the concept. I wasn't sure what to think once he described things more thoroughly. I think I was a little freaked out, despite my best efforts to hide it. It's a kink I don't understand. I tried to put myself in his place, but the thought of him another woman makes me nauseous, so I still don't understand his desire in the opposite. But since I adore him, the conversation shifted to how we might integrate this into our bedroom to better fulfill him. Now that it was all out in the open, he was quite excited and soon proposed we arrange something up, with him getting a buddy to me in front of him. That notion was instantly rejected by me. I couldn't get beyond the fetish's basic existence. I didn't like the notion of him having with someone else, and the thought of me doing it was only marginally less repulsive. Doing so with someone we both knew while my spouse looked on was utterly out of the question. Next, he recommended I tell about experiences I had with some of my prior lovers, and he questioned whether I was being really honest about my past comparisons. Maybe I should have simply lied then, but instead I immediately convinced him that he was my most gratifying and emotional relationship. I didn't sure what to think when he seemed a little disappointed. He didn't question me for a second. We eventually came to an agreement that I would have a one-night stand with a stranger. I wasn't pleased, but I could see how delighted he was about the possibility. The improved dramatically immediately after our conversation. For a while, I thought that this dream would be enough to make him forget about really doing it. He didn't though, and continued bringing it up inconspicuously till the night arrived. I dressed up in ways I hadn't done in years, and my husband couldn't stop smiling as he walked out the door. I then proceeded to a nearby pub where I was unlikely to stumble across someone either of us knew. I was nauseous the whole way, and when I arrived to the pub, I simply began drinking, feeling awful about what I was doing. Guys hit on me, which would have been flattering in any other situation, but now it only made me feel worse. I scarcely said anything to any of them, and soon they got the point, leaving me alone to drink and drink. I'm not sure whether I had any ambitions of picking up a man that night, but if I did, they didn't last long. I couldn't even pretend that I was going to follow through on this. At this time, I was really inebriated and didn't want to face my spouse. I took a cab to a girlfriend's house and practically requested that I pass asleep on the sofa. Given how I was dressed and how intoxicated I'd been, I could tell she had a lot of questions the following morning. She plainly assumed I was experiencing problems with my husband, but I had no intention of giving her the specifics, so she was kind enough to leave it at that. I went home to my spouse, unsure if I should tell him everything or simply pretend I'd done it. The truth is, he was ecstatic with what he believed had occurred. I had the best of my life, and he seemed to have the same. I'd done some research, so instead of my normal flattery, I criticized him this time. I hesitantly compared him to the non-existent other guy at first, and that really got him into it. Our problems in the bedroom were gone. I could have lived with myself if that was all there was to it. I wasn't thrilled about lying to my spouse, 
but it seemed reasonable given the circumstances. He's been implying that he'd like me to have another night out because it shouldn't be a problem now that I've done it before. If I do it again, though, I know I have no intention of following through with it. I had fooled myself the first time into believing I'd do it for him. If it happens again, I'll probably go drunk at a girlfriend's house with the purpose of lying to him in the morning. I have no intention of discussing this with anybody I know, which is why I'm shouting on the internet. My genuine quandary is that, in comparison, I'm not too worried about lying to my spouse again, and this disturbs me. I've always been entirely honest with him, and I feel he has been the same with me, save from his sudden disclosure of this obsession. The thing is, this doesn't appear to be a major lie to me. I'm not cheating on him. He simply believes I am and gets excited about it. I don't need to cheat for his dream to work, and it's better for both of us if I don't have anonymous with strangers. The only difficulty with my planned course of action is that it requires fooling my hubby on purpose. Story 2. Should I cut off my best friend for being friends with someone who wronged me? So for a few years, I 23 female had a closest buddy who we'll name X, 22 female, for the purpose of the tale. X and I have had several disagreements in the past. For example, over a year ago, I was in the midst of a life-threatening medical emergency. She contacted me during this situation, requesting that I pick her up since her tire had burst and she was in the vehicle with her boyfriend at the time. I informed her I couldn't drive right now due to a medical issue, and she simply hung up on me and didn't speak to me for weeks. Also, her partner was just 16 in high school, engaged with drugs and crime, and was often abusive to me. X was aware that her being with him made me uneasy, particularly because he was just 16 years old. They began dating when he was 17 years old, on or around his birthday, for example, which may be regarded as grooming. I'm a female. It's not the same as it is the other way around, she constantly said. Anyway, after the medical issue and a few weeks, she began talking to me again, and we remained friends, but I maintained my distance from her. Months passed, and she gained a new closest friend, whom we refer to as Lisa 21 female. Then X ditched her adolescent lover. Eventually X and I reconnected, and she introduced me to Lisa. Lisa and I hit it out so well that we ended up moving in together and sharing an apartment. X appeared to like the entire situation. We'd all hang together all the time and had become a little three. And X despised her young ex-boyfriend because, when they split up, he began to assault all of her pals. He hurled a stone at one of her friend's vehicles, threatened other friends in her family, and showed up abruptly at her home. It became so terrible that she obtained a restraining order against him at her employment. But later, while Lisa and I were still living together, X unexpectedly reconnected with her ex-boyfriend. This enraged all of our friends because he had not only injured and humiliated her, but he had also harmed and disrespected all of us in various ways. When we all expressed our disgust and perplexity over her getting back with him, she exploded and cut us all off. This caused Lisa to have a panic attack, and I questioned X about it. I told her she was irrational and harsh, and that this guy is plainly not good for her, and she is not good for him. Following this, X and I severed all connections. Lisa was able to maintain her friendship with her, because she's the sort of person who wants to be friends with everyone. After a few weeks, X contacted Lisa while I was asleep, attempting to persuade her to steal my vehicle without my knowledge and assist her with her relocation. When Lisa informed her that I wouldn't be okay with that since we're no longer friends and it's my vehicle, X simply called me and left it at that. I no longer live with Lisa, but we are still close friends and communicate every day, and we intend to live together again. My only concern is that Lisa still hangs out with X and will tell me anything X says about me to her which makes me wonder why X feels so at ease speaking negatively about me to Lisa. Not to add Lisa constantly speaks about X to me, calls her a P asterisk V zero fill three, and even made a diss track about her, but still hangs out with her and talks to her on a daily basis. The entire situation is strange, and it makes me a little uneasy. I'm thinking about simply breaking connections with Lisa because I don't trust her anymore, and it bothers me that she's still fine with X after she's openly disregarded all of us, particularly me, and is back to dating someone way too young and toxic for her.
Would I be a jerk? Or is it truly none of my business who knows who? Please accept my apologies if this seems strange and perplexing. There's been a lot of other nonsense, but this is probably the most necessary item to convey in order to get the tale over. Please contact me. I apologize for the length of this message.